All right. All right, we're live. Sergio? Well, yes, sir. Um, well, uh, we're back on uh, Show Me The Money Club, um, another episode with wonderful guests today. Um, today, we're, we're, we're really honored to have uh, David Seligman, Ben Valdez, Nicole Moore, and Rachel Dempsey. Um, ben Valdez is the plaintiff on the latest antitrust lawsuit that uh, David Seligman and Rachel Dempsey are counsel for. And uh, Nicole Moore, an old friend from four years or 44 years ago. <laughs> Um, she's the head of RDU, Rideshare Drivers United, a local-based group with, are you guys up to 15,000 members yet, Nicole? 20K. 20K, there we go. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you know, today um, we're all here to discuss, more than discuss actually, to get information on this latest lawsuit, um, the antitrust lawsuit against Uber and Lyft. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the clock. Actually, first we'll do the legal counsel, introduce themselves, and then Ben and Nicole, a short introduction, and then we'll get into, uh, to hearing what they have to say. So, uh, David and Rachel, go ahead and introduce yourselves. Hi. Um, thanks so much for having us, Sergio and Chris. I'm David Seligman. I'm an attorney and the executive director of Towards Justice. We're a nonprofit legal organization. Uh, that litigates on behalf of workers. And I am Rachel Dempsey. I am a staff attorney um, also at Towards Justice. Wonderful. And uh, Ben and Nicole, go ahead. Uh, so I'm Ben Valdez. Um, I'm a rideshare driver for both Uber and Lyft. Uh, just over 10,000 rides, and I've been driving since 2015. Right. I'm uh, Nicole Moore. I'm a part-time driver and... Um, one of the founders of Right to Drivers United and currently the president. And I'm hoping to be a class in this lawsuit at some point. Yes. Well, uh, <laughs> we uh, Chris has put, I think, the link on the show notes as far as who has information or can join when this becomes a class. Um, but uh, before that, let's um, David, can you explain what the suit is about? Sure. Thanks. Thanks, Sergio. Um, so uh, you know, we are representing um, three drivers, in, including Ben, in bringing a proposed class action lawsuit uh, in in California. Um, and, and those drivers are, are seeking to represent a class of all drivers in California um, who have opted out of Ubers and Lyfts um, arbitration clauses. So um, uh, to Nicole's point about being a uh, hoping to be a, a class member here. We'll talk more, Rachel will talk a little bit more about um, what people's rights are and what they should know if they think that they are a, a potential class member if the case proceeds um, and proceeds as a class action. Um, but just to give a brief overview of what the case is and and and, and what it's about, um, the, the core of this case uh, is the argument that Uber and Lyft can't have it both ways. So on the one, they can't on the one hand deny their, their workers the benefits of employee status, like, like minimum wage and all the other protections, without also giving them the autonomy um, and independence uh, that the antitrust laws require um, to be extended to, to independent contractors. Um, so, you know, for example, um, it is uh, per se uh, illegal, we allege, under California law um, for Uber and Lyft to fix prices um, that uh, are charged to, to riders uh, across the platforms, to deny their drivers the flexibility and autonomy um, to set prices for themselves. That, that is, we allege, a per se violation of um, the uh, antitrust laws, in a, uh, California antitrust law. Um, in addition, um, we allege that various of uh, Ubers and Lyft's practices are illegal under uh, as as being unfair um, and um, and deceptive. Um, so, for example, um, we allege that that uh, Uber's and Lyft's um, failure to provide drivers with uh, information about the destination of rides, information that's not conditioned on uh, a certain minimum acceptance rate, for example, um, but their failure to provide information about the destination of rides um, uh, in advance of accepting a ride is, uh, that is illegal. 
Um, we allege that, that, that their uh, practice of extending um, secret you know, b bonuses and, and, and payments to some drivers and not to others um, is, is illegal. Um, with respect to many of these practices, uh, of course, the companies would be permitted um, to engage in them, perhaps if their drivers were were employees, right? So, so a company can say, for example, um, what prices must be charged to customers by by employees. That's 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 something the companies do, you know, all all the time. They deny their employees uh, the you know autonomy and independence to set prices for themselves. Um, but we say the companies can't, on the one hand, um, deny their drivers uh, the benefits of employee status, while at the same time um, not providing to them um, the, the independence and flexibility to make those kinds of uh, decisions on their own. Great. Um, Rachel, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think David summed it up pretty well. Okay. Um, so, Nicole, I've known you for a while, right? And we, we've I've done a few pieces actually on the RDO. I've even gone to a uh, couple of your demonstrations actually. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, they were like, they were awesome. And then the pandemic came, obviously, right? Sure, kind of, you know, went away. But now it's back in full force again, right? So, but I know RDU's starting point with a couple hundred people. And now you just said, you know, you guys are up to 20,000. Are all 20,000 members drivers, by the way, or like delivery drivers and rideshare drivers? Yeah, I mean, the majority of us are rideshare drivers. I will say that a lot of people uh, stopped driving during the pandemic, right? Because uh, the risk was too high. And there, you know, at the beginning when they shut down, there were no rides to, to pick up. So um, that's kind of, you know, so <clears throat> 20,000 of those people are people who, at least have driven <laughs> since you and I met Sergio. Um, and there's a lot of new drivers coming in right now, um, you know, just kind of flooding the streets and brand new because the economy sucks and everybody's having a hard time pay for groceries. So people are like trying to pick up some extra hours with driving. And, um, you know, we know that in order for us to change the conditions that drivers are, are working under, we have to be the majority of drivers. And so, you know, we're always working to pull new people into the organization. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you on that. Um, so I know what RDU stands for, but um, can you tell me a little bit more about what RDU members are thinking about this flexibility and freedom rhetoric, which I wrote about actually, ironically, it got published yesterday. And, um, you know, <laughs> flexibility and freedom is something that, I honestly am not buying, but then, you know, a lot of people are saying, look, you know, whenever you can turn the app on and off, that gives you enough flexibility and freedom. But if I, you know, if I do it at three in the morning, I'm not going to make any money, but if I do it at right. 7 a.m., I'm going to make $40 an hour. So to me, it's like, who cares about flexibility and freedom? If I turn it, you know, it's, they make it sound like, you know, uh, turn the app on and go and it's flexible and it's freedom. Well, I, I, you know, my last sentence of the article was there's nothing flexible or free in Uberland. But let me hear what you're thinking about that, Nicole, about the flexibility and freedom aspect and what your members are thinking about it. Yeah, I mean, I think drivers, we, we need flexibility, whether it's to pick up our kids, whether it's to try to figure out how to work with another job, which is what I do. Um, and, you know, to be able to, you know, take off a day or, or work a day or whatever. Um, and, you know, that's the only aspect of flexibility that we have right now. I mean, most of us, like Sergio, when, when, when you and I met four years ago, uh, we could work half the hours we work today to make the same amount of money. Yep. So uh, when, when I think about flexibility and the company saying, oh, we really want flexibility, um, what I feel like they're saying is they want the flexibility to pay us less and less money. And they're figuring out a lot of business strategies to do that. Um, you know, and I think, um, you know, Prop 22 has been really hard hard on us because it basically set the floor of what they can pay us to uh, below the basement. And, um, you know, we, it's really hard. And, and, you know, many drivers, you know, said, oh, well, this is good because of our flexibility. But what we found out was that we actually lost flexibility after Prop 22 passed. Um, you know, none of us want to be employees. Employees sounds horrible, but the labor rights that come with employment um, would actually end up paying us more money, right? 
Um, yeah. And what I've learned over the last couple of you know years is that actually there's nothing in employment law and labor law that says we can't pick up when we need to. The company knows how yeah. in, how to incentivize us to work. You know, like you said, you know, if you work Friday, you know, evening, you're going to make a whole lot more money than 3 a.m. on Tuesday. So you work when they're incentivizing you to work with bonuses and whatever else. Um, you know, that that wouldn't change under labor law. There's no requirement for that to change. So right. yeah, I mean, that's kind of where we're at. I mean, People want you know, flexibility. We all yeah. need flexibility. We don't really have it when you have to work 60 or 70 hours a, a week just to pay the rent. Yeah, I mean, I agree with that. But, you know, the other thing is, um, you know, with Prop 22, they, they were supposed to come with a lot of protections against, you know, unjust deactivations and things like that. But that's not the space for it now. I think Prop 22 failed completely, to be honest with you. Uh, I agree with you. I don't know if your members agree with that or not. Um, so, uh, Ben, a uh, question for you. Um, why did you want to bring this case forward? Uh, basically, I've been a driver for the last seven years now, and every single year without fail, there's always been something that's changed. Um, and, you know, and it always amounts to drivers making less or having to work more. So for that very reason, I just I just feel that a lot of drivers like myself are unable to talk or unable to, uh, you know, fight for their own rights. And I think it's, you know, enough, enough, enough is enough. And it's time to kind of press them for uh fair wages and basically if they're going to treat us like independent contractors they need to treat us like independent contractors and not like employees and having hidden algorithms and you know whatnot yeah i mean i i said that the other day remember chris you know um and now it became like a viral video actually we just released a couple of days ago is you know these companies want to have the cake and eat it too yeah. and you can't do that i mean you just can't do that and to me it seems like this lawsuit is all about that you can't have the cake and eat it too you just got to do one or the other pick your pain Call me one or the other, but treat me exactly like what you're calling me, as opposed to one day you treat me like I see, the next day you treat me like an employee, next day you treat me like this. It's just, you just got to come to a resolution and then just, you know, let me know what to expect, as opposed to every day I get something else. Absolutely. You know, I get punished for doing this as an employee, but then the next day you say, oh, you're an IC. Oh, now you have to do, you can't cancel too many rides or this or that. So to me, it's like uh, enough is enough. What do you think about that, Nicole? I mean, you know, these people want to have the cake and eat it too, all from the first day, right? And and but then you know, when you do talk to a lot of drivers, which we do, they don't want to be employees. That's a fact, right? That's how they passed Prop Twenty Two. They did these surveys, this and that. And truly, when I talk, talk to hundred drivers, seventy percent of them literally say, "I don't want to be an employee, but I want to have certain rights." And and you know what's happening in Washington, state of Washington, right? In Seattle, the rates have gone up and there are certain protections coming in. Australia, the same thing is happening. In England, the same thing is happening. New York, you know, they have their own set of rules. Do you think that's what we need, Nicole? I mean, like, do, you, do we need, like, let's say, state of Washington kind of legislature yeah. or laws to come in to protect drivers? I don't know if you know much about what they passed or if we, which is going to come into play January 1st now. But um, what do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, let's be clear that the model in Washington is uh, Washington State is completely different than the model in New York, because okay. yeah, I agree. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they, yeah, what they did in Washington is, um, it was it was like three or four years ago that their city council uh, of Seattle fought for uh, the the base pay a um, dollar, you know, I think it's a dollar twenty, dollar thirty um, yeah. per mile, and they fought for you know the the city council passed an ordinance that you know, they, that the companies couldn't operate there unless they paid people that, right? That's yep. regulation. That's good regulation that I think all of us could see. You know, I mean, we even fought for that here in LA. We got the city council to uh, uh, vote for us to have $30 an hour uh, yep. minimum, you know? Um, but but what happened in, 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 in Washington was that they took those good rates that Seattle City Council had already negotiated, and they said, "We're gonna tr we're gonna make those rates for the whole state." So they did expand it. I mean, the only real market is you know Seattle Tacoma sure. area. Right. We're gonna okay. trade that for your labor rights. 
so that right. you no longer have a right to get unemployment insurance, workers' compensation. You don't have the right to form a union, but we'll, we're going to pay this union a passenger tax to take care of your, um, you know, deactivations. Right. I mean, okay. who's I mean, paying who? So, so yeah. my thing is, I don't think it's really the kind of uh, situation where drivers are equal at the table with the companies right right um rachel now what they're doing in you. new york is completely different yeah, yeah. uh but you what know what they're doing um, in new york no well new york new york has the tlc so they have they've been different from the get-go but um mm -hmm. but I, i'm thinking you know uh, <laughs> even with the rates that they have offered right buck 20 a mile and 35 40 cents a minute they're double LA rates, 60 cents a mile and 21 cents a minute. That's where we are. We're pathetic. I mean, the IRS deduction is 62 and a half cents for God's sakes. You know, how do you, how does any driver do math and figure out they're profitable when the IRS deduction is higher than what you're getting paid per mile? I'm, I'm not sure how that works with them, but, um, for, uh, Rachel, um, let's get you involved for a second. Um, how do, um, drivers get involved in this or what, can they do? Uh, can you talk a little bit about opting out or how they contact you or your, um, um, you know, your outfit? So how do we how do we spread this information for other drivers, even with the important information to get in touch with you just to start with? Sure. Thank you. Um, thank you for having us on the show. Um, and I just want to say that we're really proud of Ben um, and Taj and Asterkey, the plaintiffs in this case. Um, for seeking to stand up and hold for an elected council. Um, I think David mentioned this, and, and Sergio, you said something like this earlier too, but the um, the impetus behind this case is really that Uber and Lyft can't have it both ways. They've been seeking to have it both ways for a very long time. Um, and they've been taking in some ways, um, you know, treating drivers as employees um, when it's convenient and as independent contractors when it's convenient. Um, and what it really comes down to is that there are laws that regulate whether someone is a driver or an, uh, an independent contractor or an employee, um, and they have to follow one or the other. They can't just ignore them. Um, yep. that's just, it's just not how it, it, it can't work that way. Um, so in terms of what we're trying to do with this case, it's a class action. Um, and what that means is that it's brought on behalf of, so Ben and Taj and Asterpani, who are the plaintiffs, um, are the sort of named plaintiffs in the case, but they're representing the interests of all drivers in California who have opted out of the arbitration. Um, and so right now, um, the most recent thing to happen in the case is that Uber um, removed the case from state court to federal. So we brought the, the case under state laws. Um, Uber has made the argument that it's necessary to decide federal issues to decide the case. We don't think that's accurate. Um, and we expect and hope to go back to state court. Um, regardless, the next step in the case is um, some sort of preliminary motion practice, um, discovery, which means getting information from Uber and Lyft about uh, the policies and practices and then getting information from, from us. Um, and then we'll ultimately seek to certify the class. And what that means is that the judge basically can, gives us permission to move forward with um, with the named plaintiffs, so with Ben, Taj, and Stephanie representing the entire class. It's sort of a um, legal conclusion that there are enough issues in common for all drivers that it's most efficient to um, to, to litigate the case all Once that happens, um, it's sort of an automatic process. Everybody who is in the class definition, so in this case, drivers in California um, within, I think, four years prior to filing who have opted out of arbitration um, would all be in the class. They don't have to do anything additional. Um, as you noted, um, the class only consists of people who have opted out of the arbitration agreement, um, and it only consists of drivers. Um, in order to opt out of the arbitration agreement in every sort of update, in every contract, for and left push, um, there is an arbitration agreement and there's procedures that are sort of buried deep in that that explain how you can opt out of arbitration. And I think, um, you know, RDU actually knows more about this, but I think that RDU has information on how to opt out online. Um, you can find sort of 
guidance for how to opt out of arbitration online, if that's something that you're interested in. Um, and even if you haven't opted out of arbitration, um, and even if you're not a California driver, um, we're still interested in hearing from you. You're not going to be a part of this specific case, um, but we would like to hear from you, um, hear what your experiences are. Um, and I think that you, uh, Sergio, have a link in the description um, where you can click to learn more about the case and, and fill out a Okay, great. Um, yeah, Chris, I saw you put the link. Uh, just put it up one more time for uh, people who are just joining the stream. David, I'll give you the last word. Um, do you have anything to add to it? Do you, you know, I'm, I, mean, I wish you guys the best, obviously. You know, I'm a driver's advocate first. Um, you know, I still drive and, and, and know what's going on out there firsthand, you know. But um, if you have anything to add, David, you go ahead and I'll give you the last word. No, thank, thanks very much for uh, for having us. It was, a, it, was, it was great to speak to, to both of you. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Nicole, David, Ben, Rachel, thank you for uh, coming on. Um, we'll follow this closely. We'll give updates to our viewers and, um, you know, best of luck. And, uh, you know, I, I say it all the time. You can't have the cake and eat it, too. This is what it's all about. You just got to figure it out, man. Well, you got to call me one and treat me like one or the other. You just can't do both when you want it. Right. right. But that's, that's what I, that's what I've been saying forever. So maybe this is this is the case that's going to prove that. But uh, again, thank you for coming on, guys. We appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks a lot, right. Sergio. Have good to see you. Take care, Nicole. See you later. All right. All right. So thank you guys for coming on. Um, for We just had a couple of people that, that came are probably coming in late and like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, so what it is, it's essentially a the, the beginning of a class action suit, um, basically in the state of California. Again, check the link that was just posted. It's also in the yeah. description below. You get more information. Uh, you can even go to the website. Um, hold on. Let me pull that up. Uh, TowardsJustice.org. Uh, and it will give you a couple more uh, tidbits of information if you go through the site and look it out. Um, so we thought we'd have them on, um, share the experiences when it comes yeah. to, you know, the whole independent contractor versus employee uh, debacle. And Sergio, I think you and I have very similar, uh, you know, outlook when it comes to you know, this whole IC versus employee uh, aspect when it comes to being uh, within yeah. the gig economy, not just Uber and Lyft, but uh, overall, some some platforms are much better at it. Some platforms yeah. take advantage of it, uh, and I think uh, the world's or the world has kind of been um, shut between some blind eyes for some people. Uh, so you know, they tell you one thing, you believe it, but in reality, if you actually did a little bit more research or, or you know put a little thought into it behind everything, you're going to start seeing uh, more and more. And I think. You know, on the surface, maybe people and drivers who are, um, you know, just going on to make extra money or, or just doing what they want to do, uh, they might look at it and say, look, I'm happy with, you know, going on when I can, going off when I can. Uh, but again, as as uh, I forget who said that and alluded okay. earlier, um, you, you, the freedom and flexibility is not really you, it's it's them. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're going back and forth when it's, when it's good and inconvenient for them. Um, so yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of things there. Um, when it comes down to it, I don't, I mean, we could have a whole conversation based on, you know, back and forth, uh, and everybody who's watching and listening, I'm sure you could chime into what your thoughts are, but, um, when it comes to employees, when it comes to, uh, independent contractor, all that good stuff. Yeah. We should run a, we should run a survey on RSG, you know? Do you consider yourself IC or employee? Two questions. Just click one or the other. I, I'll, uh, I don't know. That'll be an interesting poll. You know what I mean? It'll mm -hmm. be like, I, I, I don't know, honestly, which one would, would win uh, or not win, but who, who chooses what. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, I mean, I definitely 100% do not consider myself an independent contractor. I don't as a driver or a delivery driver now. Roger mm -hmm. Lisa says, I see. There you go. And a lot of people say, I see. There you go. Uh, filing 1099 versus the way you get treated has nothing to do with being an IC. You know, um, but 
yeah, I mean, yeah, we should run that poll. I think that would be an interesting poll. Um, okay, cool. So what else yeah. we got? Oh, uh, you know what? I saw a comment. I think that's just like a kind of because we do deal with this law firm, right? Um, and uh, about background checks, right? I'm mm -hmm. hearing a lot from drivers that this background checks are absolutely getting like messed up. I mean, you know, checker now is finding things that they haven't found for the last three years. You've been a driver and then now they're finding it and you're getting deactivated. So, um, but I think, yeah, I, you know, maybe we'll have that. We'll have, what's his name? Larry? What's his name? Larry? Larry. Yep. Yeah. Like we can have Larry on, on an episode just to explain about this, how they're going about it, because it's becoming a really big issue. I'm hearing mm -hmm. this constantly now that background checks are ending people's, you know, uh, being a driver. I mean, uh, uh, you know, I've even found that I found out that even people who got hacked or their identity has been stolen. Now they're showing up on the checker background checks and then they're just getting deactivated right and left. Um, yeah, I agree with yeah, you. So uh, just we just posted a video recently on that, too. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, if, yeah. If, if, for anybody who's watching for background checks, um, one of the things you can contact is Larry. It's uh, he works with law or he. He's with a law firm that we work with when it comes to these background checks uh, and the issues there. Um, so you can go to protecting consumer rights. Let me put a link to um, for people who want to check that out. And this is something again. So if you have issues with background checks um, or deactivations from it, uh, he can we can look at it and see if they can help out. Um, yeah. It's definitely something we would recommend uh, not going to some other <laughs> services that are fly by night and type things. Uh, we've worked with him before. You've probably seen him in a couple of the videos. Uh, I think he did uh, one or two podcasts with Harry already. So, um, yeah. All right. So let's we we want to get right into the show with them because uh, they were here for a limited time. Yeah. Uh, so well, the other we, thing is, by the way, you know, don't people are going to complain now? Oh, they didn't say anything. This and that. Look, there is an ongoing lawsuit, right? The lawyers are not are going to say as little as possible. With the potential that Uber may be watching this Uber legal team or whatever. It's pretty obvious, you know, we're kind of muted. We can't say whatever we want. I mean, we can say what we want. We, we, those, those are our thoughts and, and, you know, whatever they are. But the lawyers are not going to get into the details of what it is. But if you guys are interested, go to the uh, website that, that we put up. And uh, literally 33 pages of the complaint is in there. If you're interested, read it. I read it, you know. Um, I mean, they're up, they're up against it, man. You know, Uber with their lawyers, right? But you never know. You know, it has to start somewhere. At some point, you know, they got to call, get called out. I mean, you can't, you can't just have the cake and mm -hmm. eat it too. And and to me, yeah, you can't, you can't uh, go both ways. You yeah. know, I mean, the, the whole thing is, it's like, I want. I mean, first off, I, I want to go back to what you'd said with uh, with the lawyers not being able to speak. I mean, think of it this way: you know, football's starting very soon. Preseason's going on. Yeah. The teams that are going uh, against each other aren't sharing the plays that they're doing. They, you know, they call the plays in the huddle or even at the line if they see something with the defense, call the audible. But they have a certain game plan that they have going forward into the thing. You know, that's the same thing when it comes to a court case. So it's in the pre, uh, the, you know, the preliminary, the, the earliest parts of it. Um, so yeah, they, they have a game plan that they're doing. Uh, you know, you can't give away those, those plays until you're ready, uh, until you're, you know, playing the game. So yeah. uh, there is a lot there. But yeah, like Sergio said, go check out that website. Yeah. It's uh, called we'll you know, uh, TorJustice.com. Um, so, you know, the other thing is... Uh, .org. Dot .org, sorry. And and uh, the other thing is, you know, we did talk about this previously. I'm sure there's going to be a new TOS, Terms of Service, pushed on you pretty soon. Um, you know, you, you have to sign it or agree to it to go online and make a living. But in the back of it where it says arbitration where it says opt out there is a link and there is a way that you guys can opt out and continue driving i've done it for the last six mm -hmm. years as soon as you sign it to go online to earn some bread go ahead and opt out it is an easy easy procedure if you do not opt out and even if you're not in california anywhere in the country and if there is a class action you will not be part of it if you have not opted out, because once you don't, if you don't opt out, you know, that you're forced into arbitration and that's a disaster. You don't want to get into any of that. Although, yes, everybody will say, yeah, lawyers make all the money, this and that. But hey, you know, 
uh, case just settled in California for eight and a half million dollars. And a lot of drivers I heard, not a lot, but, you know, at least more than 100 drivers are getting 40 to 50 thousand dollar settlements. Um, those were the those were the ones that opted out. So please do opt out of every TOS that you sign to get back online. So mm -hmm. um, there is a yeah, link they, or there is a video. They bury it on purpose because they don't want you seeing it. But honestly, I mean, if you scroll all the way to the last page, it's usually on the last page or the second last page. Yeah. Um, so it, it's got the little process there. And that's, that's again, anywhere um, you can do that. I mean, but you know, like I said, we wanted to uh, get right into it. So we didn't even do our intro or anything uh, okay. because they had uh, limited time coming on. So we yeah, just wanted uh, to we appreciate Chris them coming on. Chris, one uh, second. So one second. There is this quite like a Salvador Chavez, right? He says, I was driving for Uber more than seven years. They just deactivated me two weeks ago because they say I have new charges on my background. Yeah. Can you want to put Larry's uh, email address or something like that? You know, on the I don't have his email. You have I just, okay. Yeah. Well, you know, we'll add it on the show notes, right? Because yeah. I honestly, I'm here. It's becoming like an epidemic. This is the next, uh, this is the driver pandemic now. You know, they're the checker, checker, by the way. Uh, is a i'm not going to say uber founded company but uh, they're backed uh, by uber so um that's a long story let's not get into that at the moment but this is the uh, site right here um, for background checks so if you're uh uh this is larry like i said this is who, who we're working with so right there um if you want to scroll up in the live chat you can and then we'll add the link after the show's over yep. now um one, before one, we one, get one. on Sorry, one more, one more, sorry. Uh, you know, one day we got to do a Q&A, just Q&A. Sergio, didn't you opt out, but Uber claimed you didn't? Yes, they did, but then Uber does not know or did not know that I keep screenshots from 2016. Um, and on this one, I have all the email trace. I sent it in and I'm in the class. So uh, when you do opt out, please take screenshots. Please, please, please. And look, these things are all done digitally these days. There's no paper trail. And when you're doing digital stuff, there is always a trail. You do a search in your email with Uber opt out or whatever the headline of the you know, email was, it's gonna pop out. And mine was clear as day. I opted out exactly in, on time. So, but the best thing to do guys, gals, everybody who's watching or we're gonna watch this later on, immediately do it because then you forget and then you have 30 days to opt out, by the way. It's not like forever that after like six months you go, oh, I wanna be part of the class opt out, then you're dead. So and it's not the biggest thing too is not retroactive. So if you opt out, like let's say a new one comes out right now, yeah. Uh, if you opt out, you know it doesn't go back to to before. So if there's lawsuits uh, that form like class action lawsuits uh, like this one that are within a certain time frame, uh, then yeah, you might not be able to do that. Kind of like how Sergio uh, with with what had happened, but yeah, that's the other thing. Make sure you. You not only screenshot everything, but you know, just keep it, you know, in a safe area too. So when something like that happens, you might not need it, but if you do, you have it. And yep. there you go. Yep. All right. Now we can get into it. Let's all right. Go. So, all right. First off, first order of business. Uh, Show Me the Money Club is now an audio podcast. So yes. for those who like audio podcasts better than video, or um, you know, if you're just like going around. Uh, listening, you know, if you want to listen uh, while you're driving instead of watching or anything like that, uh, you will be able to get Show Me the Money Club on an audio podcast. Uh, we are on all major platforms except for Pandora right now because they take a while to approve it for some reason. But uh, other than that, you can get it on Apple, Spotify, Google, um, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, all of them uh, that are they're available. All of the podcasts that we've done already or all of the shows that we've done already are already uploaded. Uh, and then this live show or any live show going forward, uh, after it's over, we'll download the audio and post it either later that day or following morning of the next day. So uh, yeah, if you want to enjoy the audio podcast, again, just search Show Me the Money Club and should pop up somewhere. So um, well, we made it, buddy. Who's, which one of us is Joe Rogan? <laughs> 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 Joe Rogan, we're coming after you, Joe Rogan. Yeah, well, I don't know. I don't know. You know what I should do is try. Uh, we should try to get a uh, a little background or something. So yeah, we got a, we got a copy of Joe Rogan's background from his Austin, <laughs> Texas. <law. laughs> you know that that may not be hard. The other thing is, uh, I uh, I'm getting tired of wearing right chair guy. So we're, guys, we're thinking of having our own stuff like merch. 
I mean, not it was not about to make money, but it's it's like, you know, I want to wear my stuff now. So uh, <laughs> as opposed to the right chair guy, but uh, we'll talk about that at a later uh, later time. Upfront pricing model I thought provided all the info rights offered. However, <laughs> it is not showing rides that have stops. Oh yeah, there you go. Oh, thank you, Alex. Uh, well, the other problem, by the way, is happening that I got an email from a. Now I get emails from strangers, from drivers all over the country. He goes, "Hey, Sergio," I'm like, "Thank." So Let's he brought some. He, he brought something up that was very valid. So he goes, "I'm on a trip, right?" He goes, uh, "The next one shows up. They ping me with the next one, right?" Uber's upfront price is not from the next pickup point. It's from where you are. By the way, I was like, "What kind of bullshit is that?" So wait, wait, hold on. back okay, up again. So, so okay, so you're on a trip, right? Yeah. And you have let's say 2.8 miles to go to drop your current passenger off, right? Mm -hmm. Uber pings you with the next one, which they do quite often, right? Mm -hmm. Stacked right in. So that one on that trip, it shows the pickup address, right, and the drop off. And the upfront fare, just like it should, right? But it doesn't calculate the upfront fare from where you are. It calculates the upfront fare from where you're gonna pick up the passenger. I'm going like, why? Mm. You are there. If you are not, if you did not have a passenger in the car, right? It would be from where you are. It would figure out the upfront fare from where you are. So I'm like, hmm. I mean, okay, what if what if the pickup is like two miles away? And you, you have another 2.8 miles to go. So what, what's happening to the 0 0.8 miles? I'm like, who's going to eat that, right? Most likely the driver. That's what's going to happen. But I'm going to oh, look yeah. into that. I'm going to look into that. That's kind of fishy. And the, the stop issue is another fishy issue. You know what I mean? I mean, you know you know how these stops work. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> they come in and then the guy goes, yeah, yeah, I'll be two minutes. And then 15 minutes later, right? So so what is what is everybody's let me, let me what is your real quick. When it come, Hold on. When, when it comes to a stop, how long do you wait until three you minutes? Go? Three minutes. Okay. Solid three minutes, baby. That's the rule. <laughs> yep. I tell them before they get out of the car. I even tell them take your shit before you get out of the car, because in three minutes I will not be here. Because most of them trap you. You know, they'll yep. leave like they leave their phone behind or they leave like their purse behind or some stuff. I'm like, no, 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 no. Pick. Yeah, they trap you. Yeah, or or mm -hmm. or another passenger. If they're double, they leave the other passenger. You know, they have to kick that one out. So I go yep. like, no, no, you have solid three minutes. This is the rule. Three minutes, I'm gone. You want to uh, downgrade me, do whatever the heck you need to do, but I don't care because my rating does not get affected by your one star, but your rating mm -hmm. with my one star is definitely going to get affected. I'm yep. a new driver, very enthusiastic of the forum, like a lot. Thank you, Sergio. Well, another Sergio, of course. You just oh, yeah. <laughs> like this stuff. I mean, come on, man. Um, yeah. Um, you know, we got to do a QA and a show one day, Chris. Only We're going to have to. But a lot of people are talking about upfront earnings. So you're going to be happy to know in two yeah, weeks, yeah. we're going to do an yeah. entire show based on upfront earnings. There's a couple of things that Sergio and I want to do um, to kind of look with upfront earnings. Uh, California and Buffalo, New York are completely different because of Prop 22. Um, we lost so on this one. We losers. California is the loser. We still have five out of 10, while the rest of the country is willy nilly rejecting rides, man. We yeah. lost again. So we're going uh, to be uh, we're going to be putting together a whole upfront earnings show in two weeks. So right. make sure you're subscribed, uh, ring the bell for that, so you're notified uh, when we do go live. If you forget, because two weeks from now is going to be different. But uh, yeah, we are going to be doing a whole upfront earnings. Uh, so if there's anything that you have questions on, uh, we might not be able to figure it out depending on how in uh, depending on how complex that actually is, or we just might not ever be able to know. Uh, but yeah, if there's anything you guys are trying to figure out or want to know. Uh, we're going to try to deep dive into it a little bit more um, so we can see exactly what is you know going to be best for drivers. So, you know, I want to know where is that tipping point? You know, the whole rate, rate rebalancing, where is that tipping point that rate after rebalancing. I go a certain distance or time that it actually is going to cost me money because it's not the same rate as it was prior to the upfront earnings. Before yeah. that, hey, I'm happy because I'm going to be making more that whole teeter-totter yeah. effect. Uh, so where's yeah, that I pivot mean, point? I want to know. You know that, like we zoom. Thank you for the for the super chat. But how do you handle the trip? Personally speaking, I'm going to give you my personal. You know me. We zoom. So <laughs> um, once I accept the ride, man. You know, like 
let's say somebody I pick up downtown LA, they're going to, I don't know, USC, and then they change their mind. They want to go to Palm Springs, which is 150 miles east. I'll politely go. I mean, if it's like 20 miles, no problem. But if it's like anything above 20 miles, that's my break point. Because I still know, even if I go 20 miles from east, west, south, north from downtown, I'm okay. But anything outside that, I'm dead. So now I'll go, you know, I'll look at the new address. If it's anything 20 miles, I'll shut up and do it because you're already in my car. But um, see, those were the days that I missed the multiplier. You would hope <laughs> that a passenger changes it to 150 miles away with a 3X. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. But those are gone. So how do you handle it? That's how I handle it with Zoom. I go 20 miles is my break up, breakdown. I go like I have an appointment. I have to pick up my kid at school. You know, I do this part time. I appreciate it. I can take you as far as 20 miles. I'll drop you off or I can drop you off at your destination. You can call another Uber and, you know, kind of de-escalate things and say, get the heck out of my car. That's it. That's how I do it. So, All right. Cheeky Chops, how do you stop minors that go to high school from coming in your car? Easy. Hard. Keep your doors locked before <laughs> yeah. they get in the car. This yeah. should be like all the time. doesn't matter who's coming in your car. Keep your doors locked. Roll down the window. Verify the person. If yep. it's you know and, somebody who doesn't look 18, yep. don't give them the ride. And don't be shy asking ID. Hey man, yep. the cops pull you over, they ask you ID. Uh, you know, this is a this is not a stop in uh, ID state, by the way. I found that out the hard way the other day. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, that's another story. Um, I hate trip rate, I hate trip radar. Carlita, go read my article, the whack-a-mole article. I'm like, yeah, maybe. Um, I'm late to the show. Well, it starts at 3 p.m. every Tuesday, Wheezy. So next time you learn it's your lesson, but there is a replay and there is now a podcast. If you if you didn't hear that one, yeah. we're we're big now. We're made it to the big time. Um, Trying to. <laughs> couldn't they report you to Uber? Yeah, they can report you to Uber, but then you take action right away. That's what you yep. do. You pull the car over immediately before they can even do it. Go to your app because they're not going to do it as fast as you. On your app, there are choices like underage. That's why I'm canceling report. And then if not call Uber support right away, you have to hit, you have to take the first punch when it comes to these. If you, if you wait until the end of your shift to do it, they complained, you're screwed. Don't do it. Don't wait. Don't wait. You know what I'm saying? Okay, here we go. Yes. Yeah. Hey, the Tony's here and driven mom. Yes. Always doors locked. Even if it's noon, do not and half, passenger window halfway down confirm. Before you let anybody in your car. All right, what are yeah, we doing? The only like time this? I might say beyond that is if you're actually on the phone with them uh, yeah. and kind of guiding them to your car. So, like, like I said, I'd like driving at night. It's yeah. just the way I like to drive. So, okay. uh, less traffic, less headache when it comes to that because I hate traffic. But yes, you are dealing with you know drunk hours and bars and bar districts. So, you know, there's a couple of spots in my area that I just I automatically go depending on where the pickup is because you can't park on the street. You know, the cops are standing right there. They will pull you over. They'll ticket you or they'll tell you to yeah. get the hell out of there. Yeah. Um, so I have a couple of spots that I just go to and then I'll call up the people and say, hey, look, uh, this is where I am at. Come come get me or come find me. Uh, it's going to be easier and safer for you guys to get in. Uh, yeah. You know, it's usually right near the bar within walking distance. Most of the time, they're very happy to do that. Uh, and then you can see who's coming to your car and you know. So like if you have a group of like eight people, just peel right off. Yep. Uh, say, oh, I'm sorry, too many people. You got to call an XL, hang up, cancel the ride, move on. If you see a few people, then, then you're good to go. You know that's the people getting in. That's the only other time I might say um, you don't necessarily have to have the doors locked, but keep them locked until they're literally coming up to the door. Yeah, uh, just so you're not, you know, again, because if you have busy bar districts and, you know, I'm on the, the road right next to it. Uh, near one of the bars uh, again you don't necessarily know who else might be around so uh, one other thing that i'm going to recommend when it comes to that you know usually as a driver you're looking this way you're looking to your passenger side um, even maybe into the back as they're getting in but you're not necessarily looking at your driver's side door one of the best things to do if you have auto locks or um, i mean when you're unlocking keep your arm on the lock on the driver's side uh, if if your car is, or you know, if you, depending on how how your car actually is, uh, whatever it is, just try to keep your door your door locked at all times, so nobody can come around and try pulling you out. Um, that's one thing I continue to forget to say, but I want to say it. So uh, just be aware of that in the in the in that event. I think this is going to turn into a question and answer one. Cheeky chops, <laughs> listen, cheeky chops. I, I like the name, by the way. Um, so here's the deal. 
you get scary or scared about rejecting minors, uh, cheeky chops. Let me tell you something. Okay, let's, let's look at the upside and the downside of having a minor in your car, okay? They go, yeah, you didn't pick them up because you're underage and they're going to report you as racist. They're going to deactivate you. Okay, you're deactivated. You go to Lyft. You go to something else. How about the other situation? You put them in your car. You get in a crash. You're a dead man for the rest of your life. Number two, you put them, you, you put them in your car and they go, he touched my leg. You are a super dead man in jail on top of everything else. So look at the upside, downside, okay? So cheeky chops, do not, do not ever, ever, ever let minors in your car. It's not worth yeah. for a $6 school trip. It's just not but, worth it. Not worth it. Don't ever do it. Well, cheeky chops, I don't know how long you've been driving or not, um, but one of the things is you want to follow all laws and you want to follow to us. Yep. It's there for your protection from liability. So yep. if you, it, let's say your car seats four, if you have five people coming in your car, or six people, whatever it is, if you take them, y y all the liability is on you 100% because insurance companies will find that information out You're and screwed. say, oh, there was six people in your car. Your car You're only screwed. has four seatbelts. They yep. ordered an X. That was what the ride was for. You had two extra people. We're not paying a, a dime for this. The lawsuit will come towards you. You'll be named in a lawsuit. Um, same thing with a, a kid without a car seat. Same thing with unaccompanied minors. You know, follow the law and follow the TOS because it's not worth it in the event something does happen. Chances yeah. are nothing's going to happen, but you don't want to take that risk. To me, that's not worth it. Um, so here's nope. the thing. Nope. You can cancel rides. There's nothing wrong with canceling rides. Um, so if you're, you're not worried about that, or if you're worried about that, just know you don't have to. And if some idiot is going to call you names in that, you know what? All you got to do, report them to Uber or to Lyft or whatever platform you're on. Let them deal with it. You move on to the next one. Try to yep. shake it off. If you need, yep. you know, some time off, go offline for a little bit. Sometimes that happens. You might have to take a little time off. Um, you know, just kind of recollect yourself. Go grab a coffee, grab something to eat, whatever it is. Um, listen to a song, listen to a podcast, listen, listen to a video that's going to get you into a good mood, whatever it is, and then go back out there. Um, but yeah. don't worry about what people are going to say because they're just pissed off because, you know, they're trying to game the system and they got caught. It's, nope. it's them. It's a direct reflection of them. So if, nope. don't Six worry about bucks. it. Yep. Six bucks is not worth any of that. Um, we zoom put a second super chat and he got, um, he got hacked, I think. Um, uh, can you find that one? So anyway, but, um, yeah. Any drivers recently have issues? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think I think that's going to happen more and more now. Um, so somebody either hacked or tried to hack and went in there and changed his email address. He was freaking out. Um, I calmed him down. <laughs> I don't think he was freaking out. He's cool as a cucumber. Uh, so he's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's okay. I'm like, okay, whatever. Uh, I'd but, recommend yeah. at that point change your password for your email and yeah. for your for Uber or Lyft. Yeah, yeah, you got to have like a 16 digit password with all kinds of <laughs> numbers and <laughs> uppercase, lowercase, and make sure it's not your birthday. Nifty 50s life says my destination filters have been so effed up lately. Well, if you have an iOS son, that's why you have the problem. I have an Android. We can talk about that privately. Uh, <laughs> they go from four. Yeah, yeah. Talk to Wizum about that destination filter. He's still crying about it. Uh, <laughs> okay. There's so, one right here. Uh, Black you, windows. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, man, we have the pandemic going on. My window, all, all four of my windows are down on, until you start complaining that it's messing up your hair in the morning before you go to work. Because of the pandemic, I like windows down. I mean, look, now it's like 103 degrees in L.A., so I have the air up just so I don't sweat. I don't think about the passenger. You want um, air on? It's going to cost you another 20 bucks. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, we lock your no, no, no. We don't lock your windows because guess what, uh, Brandon? I don't know if you're in California or not, but in, in California, pot's legal up to a certain uh, limit. And, you know, the, when, when, when a pot smoker or, or a guy that's carrying pot on himself gets in your car, that car smells pot the rest of the day. So you have your windows down, you know, or, or I mean, to me, it's like, uh, that's another no-win situation. You know, the guy had just smoked pot, walks in your car, and the car smells pot. The next passenger gets in, says, this guy had just smoked pot in his car. And I'm like, I'm deactivated, you know. So uh, New York's law. That's Holy a law God, everywhere, Scott. I think, no? Look at this, Scott, uh, this comments. Uh, Avis Uber rented a vehicle to Scott 
uh, that had cut seatbelts and the assistant manager told him just to tie it in a knot. I would love to see that conversation, but yeah. holy crap. Yeah, email that's it to me. If you have a file, email it to me. And that's we'll send it, we'll send it to Dara. Go to Avis. You know, uh, on the, the next, company, on, the next inter- on the next interview, Chris, we'll send it. We'll play that uh, tape to Dara. <laughs> and I was like, what do you think about this, sir? <laughs> you know, your agents are telling us to drive with uh, tie knots on our seatbelts. <laughs> I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Video. Where was okay, it? Well. Osium, there we go. Yes, uh, Osium for the win. Yeah, bro, come on, man. I'm that like, you know, well. I'm just trying to make 20 bucks. Come on. <laughs> it's like, oh, it's too much. Too much work. Anyway. Yeah, Eddie, and the, Eddie, the other thing, too, I, I Driven Dad said something back. A little bit when it came to uh, uh, miners and stuff like that. One of the things is this is another reason why you want to have a dash camera because dash cameras record everything. Yes. Whether you're in the right or the wrong, uh, it's going to record everything. It yeah. doesn't care how you feel, how you look, it doesn't care about your passengers. It just records what's happening. Um, so it's definitely recommended to have something uh, with audio, with uh, interior video, um, something where, you know, Everything is going to be recorded, the entire interaction. Now, the only thing is, if you live in a two-party consent state, uh, just make sure you follow any laws there. If you had to post something on it, on your car or anything like that, just make sure you, you follow those laws. Again, follow all laws and um, go from there. All right, Chris, we got to get into the show. Um, oh, downhill money-wise. What, uh, well, hey, did you, did you watch a video that we put up like, what was it, four days ago? Worst earnings in LA since 2019. Yes, it Worst is. Worst earnings anywhere. I mean, bro, I, you know, but you know what? Little, you know what? Things are changing. Things may be changing. Well, I don't know. Yeah. But so, here's the thing. For, for a couple of weeks now, uh, sat- Friday nights and Saturday nights uh, in downtown Buffalo lit up like a frigging Christmas tree. Um, right. not, it hasn't been for a few weeks, though. Uh, there's been very little and you know you'd hit you'd hit from about 10 p.m. through you know 4:30 uh, ish time frame because bars close at four um, with in the whole downtown Buffalo area just booming. It really hasn't been like that for for you know about a month or so now. Yep. Um, but you know college is now back in session, opening up. Um, schools are starting again, so things are starting to get better. So. You know, more surge you're seeing, less drivers on the road. Uh, demand is still there. Actually, demand is growing in college cities. Uh, we have a couple of colleges in our area, so yeah. it's working out well. <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the city is getting lit up again. Uh, Jonah, yeah, it's, it's, no, it's not going downhill. I mean, it depends what city you're in, you know. I'm in L.A. I don't know what city are you in. But um, if you're in a major city, things are picking up. This is, this is the dollar signs. Uh, last weekend, Friday, Saturday night, solid surge for like four or five hours and i'm not talking like pennies we're talking double digits okay so but i can't do it because uber now decided <laughs> <laughs> the uber decided that i'm a delivery end now and i'm like i wrote about it i go screw your flexibility and freedom and i'm like why why am i why am i just a delivery driver i can do whatever the heck i want right <laughs> Um, yeah, that, bad, that, right? that, state law coming January to where to Washington State, not to California. You know, if you're in Washington, Donald, email me. I want to have you on the show. I want you to explain to all the drivers how you guys ended up with buck twenty five a mile and forty cents a minute because that's double what we have, and we would love to have that down here. But um, all um, over, yeah, yeah, we zoom that 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 display right thing, bro. I think I'm just gonna send it to you. Okay, that's it. Just you can do the review. How about that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I wrote this article. Came out when? Yesterday, right? Yesterday, yep. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. So it's freedom of flexibility and illusion in the gig economy. Well, you know what? Um, yeah, I think it is because after six years of being, you know, Tony is going to chime in here and say, oh, don't worry about it after four weeks. I don't want to wait four weeks, Tony. Let me tell you something, bud. This weekend, my neighborhood, which never surges, surging 15, 20 bucks a pop, and I'm like, well, if I had a quest, maybe, you know, just or a, or a CRB or some sort of boost, whatever, I'd be out there driving. So now I have to drive like at least a, a month, according to Tony, driven dad um, from Denver to 
get back into the good graces of the freaking algorithm. That's my boss. There's your freedom and flexibility. Uh, uh, algorithm is your boss's people. So, so this is the this is the email after two weeks because I want to write an article about delivery versus ride share. I did like two weeks of delivery, and he goes, "Hey, Sergio, most of your trips in the past two weeks have been deliveries with Uber Eats." So, <laughs> hello, and 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 then he goes. So now it says you're going to get Uber Eats promotions instead of promotions, right? Promotions. Why? What happens to my flexibility? I do five trips, ride share, and 10 trips, food. I get what I get. Now, if you're going to cut me off altogether, don't sugarcoat it like this. Just say, hey, man, you know why we're not going to give you the quest? Because you're taking the ride share quest, applying it to Uber Eats, and we're losing our ass. That's why we're not giving you the ride share quest. How about that? Talk to me about that, which I agree, by the way, because the margins on Uber Eats, I check my receipts, are stupid low. I mean, ridiculous, like 50 cents, a buck and a half, $2. And I'm like, I don't care. So what I did, of course, was I had rideshare quests and I applied it to uh, Uber Eats and Uber lost money. And then, but Uber says it like this. He goes, yeah, um, we'll reassess your preferred trip type. I don't have a preferred trip type. I want to do all four. You have the next screenshot, bud? The one with all the preferences that I have in my account? Oh, no. You don't have that one? Okay, so you know everybody knows when there's like on the lower left-hand corner next to the go button, there's like two two horizontal lines or whatever they are, asterisk. And, yeah, you and if you click on you that, want. that's your preference. I have five things in there, five. I can choose anything, anytime I want, according to you, Uber and Lyft. Well, forget Lyft. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> so Uber, you gave me those five choices. If you didn't, why do you, why do I have the preferences? It's my preference. This week I do Uber Eats. Next week I do rideshare. But that doesn't mean some algorithm somewhere is going to decide that I'm not going to get the money. So to me, it's like, what freedom and flexibility? Algorithm is my boss. He's or she or, or she, is an algorithm he or she? Because, you know, we're big in pronouns these days. I have to uh, I think myself as Sergio, it. he, him. I'm like, I don't even understand that. I think it's an it. <laughs> it's an it. Okay. Uh, it is watching me. And um, Wheezy, delivery is juicy, my man. Or, oh, no, lady. I apologize. Delivery is wonderful. They don't throw up in your car. They don't slam your door. They don't ask for ox cord. Go read my article coming out. Wheezy, delivery is wonderful. As long as you're productive half the time, you're sitting on your butt in your car watching YouTube, though. Um, so, yeah, there is no freedom. There is no flexibility. And they cut me off. I'm in Quest Jail. But you know what? I don't give a rat's ass, Chris, because when the city is surging 15, 20 bucks a pop, I don't care about the, what is the Quest now? 70 for, what, 100 bucks? I don't care about the dollar. There you go. Look at it. Oh, oh, yeah. They go, here, Serge. This is your this is your uh, Uber Eats uh, um, whatever promo. It goes boost your earnings by driving. Look at the one on the left, Chris. You know all that green area, right? Mm -hmm. that's, that's like a that's like that's like the, the 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 mountains. I go like there is no restaurants up there. Uber Eats. They give me a <laughs> boost for for my Uber Eats between nine p.m. and midnight. I'm like no, thank you. The next one. The next one is in the middle of the city. Okay, I'm not going to be there at that hour anyway, because if I was in there, I'm not going to do Uber Eats. I'm going to do ride share and kill it. It says between 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. So this is what they downgraded me down to. 1.1 boost, 1.2 boost, and between 12 a.m. and 4 a.m. Shove it, Uber. There you go. <laughs> That's it. So you're only getting boost plus, but it yeah. it that should apply. Doesn't that apply for both ride share and delivery? Yeah, 1.1. What is that? Yeah, I mean, 1.1 is not what is that? anything, but still. I mean, so you know, instead, that's... instead of 60 cents a mile, you're what, 63 cents or 66, 66 cents a mile? mile. 66 <laughs> cents a mile. And, but guess what? My, um, I'm going to start driving more right here because um, it's surging like hell now. It's like the morning rush hour is there, afternoon rush hour is there, weekends are lit up. From like, here's, I don't know. Here's the thing that that comes down to the whole freedom and flexibility thing. So if yeah. you drive full time, you don't have freedom and flexibility because you're online all the time. You have to. If you want to drive and, and make money and you know be selective, if you're driving part time like Sergio myself, you're trying to stack the bonuses when you can. Um, so again, 
you see on those on those screenshots, right. they're only doing it at certain times. They're not doing it at other times. Well, I'm looking. Uh, I'm so having that you, okay, I'm not this when you're going to go on. This is where you're going to go on, and there you go. And uh, then there's the you know the weekend driver, the people who are just doing it for extra. So they might be watching, they might not. But yeah, there's there's not too much freedom and flexibility there. Nope. They force me. They force me to do this. Either you do this or you do that. I'm like, no, no. That's not how it works. That's exactly why you guys are getting sued. You can't have the cake and eat it too. There you go. Suck it. Anyway, <laughs> we zoom. By the way, I'm doing an article on we zoom, just specifically on him. How the guy, this is a guy with a plan B, okay, and a C. And he's busting it, but you know, God bless him. He's a hard worker. Yeah, that buck 50 boost. Yeah. Yeah, that that 1.1 1. 1 boost I have. Mm -hmm. I really care about that Uber. No, I care about the like $16 surgery I'm about to do a shorty with. 20 bucks for five minutes. Thank you. But it is Donald French says under the new load drivers will also have access to paid sick time. Family America. Donald, we gotta we gotta talk. If you're in the if you're in state of Washington, Seattle, Tacoma, wherever you are, let's, mm -hmm. please email me, Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. I have to have you with a New York driver on a town hall because you two I'm cities, here. you two states. You know, drivers are swimming in cash. Unlike us, we're just fighting over peanuts. So, yeah, Donald. Uh, so you can talk all about this on the show, buddy. Okay. Donald French, email me, Sergio at the rideshareguy.com. Um, I never had anyone throw up. Wheezy, it's only it's a matter of time. If you drive drunk hours, I, lo I look at the drink and I thought, Wheezy, you also have to email me. You know, I'm telling you, uh, you're going to see my article, the numbers I'm pulling down doing food delivery. Now, no tip, no trip, people. Oh, by the way. You know, you know, all these gig tubers with like 800 members. Uh, I, I, you're part of that. Where, where's Driven Dad? Tony, where are you? If you're still on, they're all into a to throwing a fit at each other now because, you know, Pedro, Pedro, our buddy who was on last couple of weeks ago, um, he said, you know, he calls people who don't tip the, the, the customers clowns. Okay. <laughs> Justifiably. <laughs> And he also calls people who take minimum orders with no tips, like two dollars seventy-five DoorDash order going four miles. He calls also the drivers clowns, right? Justifiably yep. so. I'm in his camp. So to there, me, we should recall them ants. Clowns, clowns. I like clowns. Yeah, but with a red <laughs> nose, with a big red nose. Yeah, I like the clown. So, so to me, now there is this dude in Vegas um, says that you have to be an ant because then DoorDash is going to give you a lot of the good orders if you're an ant. He says, I have the metadata and I've cracked the algorithm. I'm like, son, you haven't cracked anything. If anybody cracked the algorithm, I cracked the algorithm, but it's the, I didn't do any of that yet. So my thing is, um, Tony now is putting himself through torture, driven dad in Denver, to become a top dasher to see if it's really going to work. No, Tony, it's not going to work. Okay? The reason it's not going to work is because, look, the ants versus the cherry pickers fight has been going on in ride share for like 12 years. <laughs> okay. It's quality over quantity. It is never about quantity. Okay. If that, if DoorDash is saying, Oh, become a top dasher. I'm going to send you bigger orders with more tips. Bullshit. It's just luck. It just happens to be you're in the right time at the right place. They're not going to do it. They're just messing with you guys. So um, yeah, be a cherry picker. and. Uh, and be a definitely a cherry picker for rideshare. I mean, that's that's number one. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> so no flexibility, no freedom. Bottom line. Well, going on, have, has anyone seen this uh, Uber yearbook <laughs> or the Uber U Uber yearbook classic? I made it. <laughs> I made it. Did I make it? I didn't make it, right? <laughs> I don't know. You made it. I made it. Look at that. Oh, oh, that one. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, another one. Really, See here, Man, this, this is the funny this. part. This is the hilarious part of the whole thing. I'm <laughs> wondering if, if it's only like the, the big thing is because you just transitioned to doing uh eats and, and delivery. Yeah. I'm wondering if it either just takes like the percentage of the amount of rides you've done with the amount of compliments you've gotten. So yeah. you have like a base minimum and you just like nicked it at the, the right time. <laughs> or is this based on ride share, but because of your delivery preference being delivery at this point, according to the algorithm, mm -hmm. then is that why you switched over? <laughs> no, yeah, no. Well, first of all, my ride share rating, 6,000 plus rides, 496. Okay, solid. 
really super solid. Um, but so I did right. What do you call it? delivery for two weeks? Right, uh, 103 total trips. Okay, 103. I mean, a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, so Uber's algorithm figured maybe I got like 50 thumbs up or something, or I don't know. I don't even know how the ratings work. Harry, come to the party, Harry. We had we always go late. That's why we need overtime. That's that's another <laughs> thing. There you see that the you know we don't have overtime protection, Harry. We're ICs. <laughs> Sergio, it says Uber sends me this. It goes, Sergio, congrats. According to your customer feedback, you're in the top 10% most highly praised delivery drivers in the US. This is not Uber, this is some algorithm that sent me this stupid email saying, like, yeah, rah, 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 get pumped up. Look at Sergio. Sergio's in the top 10. Bro, I only did 100 deliveries. The next one could get me deactivated because the food is going to be cold and late, okay? Because I'm sucking on Prop 22 money. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Sergio, it takes a lot to impress customers. I'm like, yeah, I've done 6,000 trips. I've never gotten anything like this, but after 100 deliveries, I'm a top 10% driver in the country, let alone whatever. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, there you go. So, yeah, how about that, Chris? You're impressed? Are you impressed? Good job. But again, I, like I said, I want to I wanna know how the where they came up with the numbers. I'm just curious, know. did you get it like at the right time and because they're de- taking all of the delivery rides you've taken and divided it by, you know, the compliments or whatever um, that you got? Or was it based on all the rides that you've done and just because your delivery preference uh, was, was no, more no, this known? Is only, this is only on delivery. It says, congrats, according to your customer yeah. feedback, you're one of the top 10 most highly praised delivery drivers, not human delivery, food delivery. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah. I was like, 100 trips. I got a bunch of thumbs up. Uh, by the way, is is uh, it, hey uh, yeah, hey we zoom? Did you get one of these? Did you get one of these? We zoom. You didn't. I bet you didn't get one of these, did you? With your Tesla Model Y. Why? Why didn't you get top ten accolades like I did? Oh no, uh, no, that's that's top one percent. That's the the upper echelon right there. Because Tesla. No, <laughs> <laughs> but no, but I I was like, you know, I want so, Toyota's so people, hydrogen fuel cell. Don't fall for any of this stuff, okay? It's just some algorithm, some code written to deactivate you somewhere. It's some code written for this little thumbs up or whatever, you know. Uh, do you know, Chris? I don't even know how the ratings things work in delivery. I mean, does it go into your overall rating or is oh just thumbs up, thumbs down? As unlike, far as I know. Unlike, unlike one star to five star? Yeah, it's just thumbs up, thumbs down as far as I oh, know. Oh, shit. Why don't they do that I for don't... all of it? <laughs> That would be a great idea instead of that one would be star, a lot better. Star. Screw yeah. the rating. Screw, screw the star system. Yeah, that's I know. So, that's so crap anyways. Oh, by the way, by the way, I got a couple of emails from delivery drivers. Guess what Uber started to do in their cities? You know the five mm-hmm. out of ten we have to see upfront destination? They're doing it for each now. Three out of ten. Really? Where's yeah. that at? That's a, is that in California or is that out, no, out no, in no, other Florida, areas? Florida and um, the other one was, I think, D.C. That was like, now they wow. have a counter for Eats. I go, if you guys do the counter on Eats, bro, I'm quitting Eats altogether. So you can take <laughs> that reward and shove it. You know what I mean? House yep. Uber and Hot Water just started watching. House Uber and Hot Water, they're getting sued, buddy. Another massive lawsuit coming their way. This one is an antitrust lawsuit. You have to rewatch the start of the show um yep. yeah the first 20 it. minutes of the show yeah. uh shows that so you can either watch the replay uh or the audio podcast will be available either later um or tomorrow morning uh, and, and that's on have, all major platforms so we you had can, the, yeah we had the legal team on we had the plaintiff on and we had the head of rdu nicole moore on so they talked their piece and got out of there so we can get on with our uh, fun show um, yeah, so I must have gotten a lot of thumbs up. So I'm a top 10% driver. And we Zoom is crying because he does more <laughs> delivery than I do. And he goes, I don't know how you got this, but you know, you're jealous, we Zoom. What's happening? Huh? Huh? Okay. I think it's because he went pee in the uh, restaurant uh, restroom and, and they got mad. So they gave him a thumbs down. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> because his Tesla is not fast enough to get the food there hot. That's why. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. But don't either know. way, well, good show awesome uh thanks for securing that that lawsuit and again for anybody who come came on later um go back check the replay uh because that is kind of uh why they're in hot water amongst 
you know, 550 women suing Uber. Um, yeah. Drivers yeah. will probably be suing for the same allegations. Um, just, just a lot of things are going on when it comes down to it. Um, Australia, not Australia. No, it was Australia. Just yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. settled a, a lawsuit with Uber um, about protections. You know into oh oh uh, yeah tony yeah did you see that flexibility and freedom up here you know what um but um harry uh is harry still here harry are you still here if you're here with that thumbs up or a thumbs down how much money did jay got out of that lawsuit that uber just settled for eight and a half million did he get his couple hundred k do you know you won't say even if you know probably harry campbell <laughs> yeah yeah okay you're here did jay get like a 50 hundred k uh check for the settlement Come on, Harry. We don't have all day. You got to go. No, actually, we don't have to go. Until you answer, I'm going to say, not, not sure, sure if you can say. Yeah, that means a yes. Okay, that's awesome. That's why he's doing uh, his uh, allegedly, 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 we'll get, we'll, yeah, That's we'll why we'll he's speak. doing the stock trading. <laughs> Tell him not to lose all that money, okay? Because pullbacks, to buy every pullback is a soccer's game, but that's okay. Um, let's go. Please, uh, one isn't Uber being sued. True, but these are, these are actually some bigger lawsuits. Yeah, um, this, this, this could be massive, uh, actually. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the other thing, too, is one of the things is this was started in California, but it could potentially hit something on a national level. So um, something like this could potentially, you know, reach many more people. Uh, you know, it's just kind of the early days. It's it's essentially the Wild West, you know, when you think about it, because, you know, everything is, you know, came around. You didn't really know what was going on, you know. These companies are trying to find, you know, every crack and crevice that they can go into um, when it comes to, to, you know, trying to, you know, do what they can, try to, you know, not pay drivers, try to charge more, a lot more beyond that. But, um, you know, they're trying to do what they can. Laws are trying to catch up. Um, so we'll see what happens. But either way. But the um, big lawsuit, yeah. you know what? The big lawsuit is going to be the other lawsuit that the one that, that the drivers side of the class action with the sexual assaults you know what i mean 50 50 remember so the passengers mm -hmm. the women are going up first and then the next one that's going to be a big one cheeky chops what city are you in and what kind of quest did you lock in please don't say like 54 20 or some ridiculous garbage okay please let's end the show on a high note because if it's 54 20 just log off okay please <laughs> come on we don't have all day let's go um what's an illusion cory kelly says it's an illusion you know we got to do like a you know yeah you well, we, have, we have a we have a guest coming on next week yes um, anybody you know do you know tony by the way do you know tony pierce no uh go i might his, go check his I gotta, stuff I gotta he's, check amazing. Out. he's amazing he's funny he's great you know so he, we got he's... tony on next week yeah, we're, we're going to be doing in. our upfront our upfront earnings episode the following week. So yeah. uh, pretty much everything that we can think of with upfront earnings, uh, both Uber, Lyft, because you know Lyft is doing their their wild okay. thing when it comes down to it. Um, you know you've been and, you know you've been running Tony's numbers. Remember the one you video you did or or the short you did. You know this driver is making thirty three an hour and thirty. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's okay, Tony, okay. bro. That's Tony. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. So he <laughs> he runs this thing called uh, here in LA. Amazing. He used to be the editor of LA Times. Now he's doing his own thing, but he's also driving now, and he's very active on Twitter and Instagram. And he's an amazing man. So we're gonna have him on probably for the whole hour because we're gonna shit our pants from laughing. He's funny. <laughs> he's funny. Thirty trips yeah, for thirty five dollars. Yeah, what city are you? Thirty trips for thirty-five dollars. You must be in Buffalo. Where are you? I mean, it's, it's garbage. No, we are. You know, it's funny because the the promos have started going down, but uh, I don't know. They they kind of flatline. They're bottomed right now. So well, I mine that. is uh, anywhere from from fifty-five to seventy-five. So forty trips for fifty-five bucks. Ten more trips for ten dollars. That's garbage. Uh, Sixty trips for seventy plus ten for another five. So a dollar. Yeah, not much. Yeah, oh yeah, cheeky chops in LA. The you know uh, in two thousand. That's for this weekend. Yeah, two thousand two. It was uh, three twenty five with a five dollar drop. Okay, a mile for Uber X. There you go. Um, there goes the spammer. Um, yeah, Thanks, Tony. Drew, exactly. Yeah. Do the low. Do the low right count. Take the money from both of them. And anything else? Do we have anything else? That's it. Are we done for today? Yeah. yeah. Uh, the only oh, thing, like, okay. is smash that like button. Yeah, smash um, that like button. Smash that. Got 100 people watching, 45 likes. Smash it. 
Um, yeah. Not only yeah, snatch it, but now we're on podcast. Repeat that again, bro. Yeah. We're now we're made it. So we made it, Harry. Be, we made it. Wanna, yep. If you want to listen to the audio form, uh, live stream will always be live Tuesdays. That's that's the schedule. It's our thing. Uh, the live show is where we're at uh, for live. So if you want to participate in the live chat, uh, if you want to participate, you know, in the show, the video, it's always going to be on YouTube. That's going to be there. Uh, we are going to expand it. Uh, FYI, just so you know, coming up, we are going to expand into a couple of different platforms. Uh, that will probably be next week or the week after. Um, but the audio podcast is available for all those people who like audio form uh, or just want to listen to it, uh, you know, not paying attention to the video or if you're driving, whatever it is. So uh, make sure you just search. Uh, you can do that. Show me the money club. and It'll pop up. So we're available on so all. Yeah, nobody, nobody's being shown the money. Look at this. Mandy says 15 bucks for 30 rise. The other one goes 30 for 40. I'm like, oh, my God. That's got garbage. Yeah, I feel for you, Mandy. 50 cents. And, and, that's, what is yeah, that? some, I mean, the, the good thing is this should be the Surge bottom. Is back. Surge is back. Yes, let's go. Yeah, this should be the ba- the bottom. And for some reason, it always kind of lags a little bit because when they do their promotions, they're basing it on historical data. So they're uh, basing on last year's data year before last week's data um and then they're just trying to like it's the algorithm yeah yeah we zoom i owe you lunch again uh, <laughs> yeah but you know what i i have lunch the 10 percent top 10 percent driver once you make it there we can talk with zoom otherwise don't <laughs> oh come but on yeah. he's an honorary member of the show me the money club <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's definitely at the top definitely at the top all right we we right. got it up to 50 likes come on a little bit more some more likes there come on, yeah. like, you guys always do it later anyway so we want you know, to you know, think- help drivers out there especially when it comes to like everything um you know yeah. talking the hot topics what's going on oh the other thing um i was talking about uh tony's on next week uh yes. the following week we're doing our upfront earnings uh, in two weeks, in three weeks, I think we do. We have anybody got any guests lined up in three weeks, or should we do our uh, ask us anything? Yeah, let's do that. Q&A. Let's do a Q and A because I like this. I like this interaction. Los Angeles twenty four twenty. You know, I don't even get it, so I shouldn't be talking about <laughs> shit about your quest. Twenty four twenty. Are you kidding me? Are we that down there now? But hey, man, James, <laughs> it's bleeding, my man. It's bleeding. Friday, Saturday night, solid surge for four or five hours, even before drunk oh, hours. So we would it, love to have Dara on, Cheeky. Yeah, Cheeky. We would yeah. love to have Dara on. Yeah, um, Dara will or, not come, you know, not, Dara, somebody from... Dara said that he will not come near me with the restraining order. So I go, okay. <laughs> no, uh, but Cheeky, we will... Yeah, sorry. So, yeah. Tony next week. Seriously, everybody, whoever is here, plus another thousand people, will bring his own people. Three thousand for one hundred eighty. Bullshit. What? That sounds. Ah, like that guy. You know what? Screenshot or it never happened. What is that? Oh, the guarantee. Are you doing the guarantee? That's a guarantee, my man. It's either guarantee or uh, sign-on bonus. Ken PSI. Go get it, Ken. Go get Go it. Get it, Sergio. Are you single? Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> Dara has two million security detail. Who cares? I have a I have two dollars security detail. Who cares? Who cares about the security detail, man? We're all human, man. We're all Mine's human, man. I mean, you know. <laughs> Look, hey, did you see Dara's picture? By the way, he tweeted it. Did you see that one? I I I, I follow him on oh, Twitter. I haven't been on Twitter in a while. Okay, him and his two kids on a bike in front of Dairy Queen window, not in a car, standing. Wait a minute. He didn't get that Uber Eats delivered. Think about that. Think about that. He's not using his own product. How shameful, right? So, oh, well, you know, maybe he, ordered, maybe he ordered it and went to go pick it up. <laughs> yeah, because he's not a tipper. That's why. Yeah, no tip, no trip for you, Dara. There you go. You, that thing would be melting there if I wasn't. But yeah, he was out there in the in the in the you know in the Ouch. wild. In the wild, he was out in the wild, and no Uber driver pulled over and and punched the crap out of him. So hey, maybe he doesn't have a two million dollar. What do you call that uh, security detail? Oh my god. Okay, we gotta end it. <laughs> All right, everybody. Yeah, thanks for watching. Hang my out. wife could be single pretty uh, soon. No, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh right. man. All right. Okay, that's All it. right. Have a good night, everybody. Uh catch it on the replay or the audio podcast. We'll see you next.